Welcome to part three of what I thought was only going to be just one single episode, but uh, you know how things go. Of course, my uh, my thought of getting a little bit of a cold was definitely a cold coming on, so that's what happens when you have a little uh, monster running around that just a germ factory, but you know can't uh, can't complain too much because you know he's cool. So. Well, in the last two episodes, we got the fuel done, we got the power steering done, and to put the gear in, I had to take out the the um, the booster and master, which I showed you that I bought a new booster and master from I, I believe it was Je uh, no no it wasn't Jegs it was uh, Summit. Um, I wasn't sure if I got it from. Um, well, what you call it? Uh, oh, I can't even remember all the places now. Uh, Classic Industries, there we go. I thought maybe I was getting it from Classic Industries. Turns out I got it from Summit, which is probably the reason why I got the wrong one. Uh, not to talk bad about Summit, but it seems like I always get the wrong parts when I order from Summit. So I went to Leeds website. Sure enough, the kit that I bought was, there's like four or five different kits for this car depending on what setup you have and what setup you're going to go with. Even though on the Summit website, that kit right there was the kit that they said that I, the one that I needed. Turns out, no, it's not the one I needed. So I ordered the one I needed. I got to return that one. However, I did want to start out this video, even though I got to wait a couple days, like uh, three or four days before I get that. So there's going to be a little bit of time gap in here. Of course, you'll never know. I wanted to start this thing up we got to check for leaks we got to check and make sure everything else is going good at this point all i did was just block off the vacuum so that we don't have a huge vacuum leak on this thing you guys have never heard it run i want to hear it run um because you know car guys man we got to hear stuff run so let me uh point you down here so you can see what we got going on as it happens Get you as close as I can. I don't want to touch the bumper because this thing might vibrate or something. So that looks pretty good. Let me give you some light. There we go. Look at that. I'm pretty proud of this engine. Uh, you know, anytime you build something on your own, you know, you got a sense of pride. You know, especially something that runs as good as this one does. It does run pretty dang good, I must say. Um, there's nothing special about this motor. It's bone stock in just about every way. The only thing that I really did to it was put a Inski cam in it. And everyone suggested the uh, 428 as the, cam as the camshaft to go with. So that's kind of what I did. I modeled it after a 428, except for I toned it down a little bit because I don't want this thing being too wild. Uh, I gave it a little more lift and duration. I'd have to pull the numbers to see exactly what bump I got out of it. Um, but I did, apparently I picked something pretty good. This thing's not too bad. It runs good. It's the drivability on it's awesome. It's got a lot of power. Of course it's an FE, so it's low end power. I'm going to wait to start it until the compressor turns off because you know, um, this thing does make a little bit of noise. When I fire it up, you'll notice that it makes like a hissing noise. And I've hunted for that noise the whole time. The one thing I remember in putting this together is it's got that exhaust crossover like most uh, all the, all the older V8s and stuff did. I know Chevy did. When you, when you bought the intake manifold gasket, sometimes they would even give you the little aluminum block off plate. Unfortunately with this one, they didn't. But one thing I did notice is that I think someone had this manifold off at one time. This is the original intake manifold for this engine. Someone had it off and they packed up the passenger side with what seems to be like a um, like a JB weld and there, but there's a small little like maybe pinky sized hole still in it and I think what's happening is, is it's actually whistling through that hole again I've been hunting that whistle for a long long time I thought maybe it was a transmission I thought maybe it was this maybe it was that and it may, it may be the pump on the transmission I'm not 100% sure at this point I do have another manifold for it that I am going to throw on there However, if you ever worked on an FE, you know how hard that is. It is not easy. So now that the compressor turned off, let me go ahead and fire this thing up so we can all hear this thing run. So 
So I got it, uh, I did fire it up before I started doing video because I wanted to make sure that there was no fuel leaks off camera, no, uh, no power steering leaks, nothing that was gonna cause this thing to catch on fire because I was too busy talking to the camera rather than paying attention to what was going on. So you'll notice when I did, when I keyed it on, the fan did come on because I have already run it. I wanted to make sure uh, that it wasn't gonna catch on fire. You know, that's the most important thing. I like doing these videos, but I'm not gonna risk my car at the, uh, you know, risk of a video, so. I'll tell you, the, the motor runs so good. You know, you're always happy when you build something and it turns out right. But uh, one thing I gotta tell you is that when I built this motor, it didn't turn out right from the beginning. We fired it up to do the break-in procedure on it and the, uh, the timing chain was hitting the, was hitting the, uh, the timing cover and so I, it took a little bit of work listen to that thing per she sounds so good so this is uh three chamber flow masters with glass packs i'll tell you i love this car i wasn't sure if i was going to keep this car in the beginning but since uh, i've been working on it I, I i love this car so it's really turning out to be something that my family's going to really enjoy now I haven't fixed everything yet, so I got a switch to turn the uh, coil off because I think I explained that at one point that the the circuit that runs the the ignition on these older Fords, not all of them, but some of them, the circuit that runs the ignition is a uh, on some of them is a lower voltage signal, so it's like nine and a half volts. And again, I don't know if I explained that before, but that's what that second wire is on the starter uh, solenoid there. When you hit it into start, that extra wire actually sends 12 volts to help it fire off. Once you let go of that key in the start position, it diverts back to its nine and a half volts. I think I explained that before where the alternator was actually back feeding power. Um, the nine and a half volts is enough to go ahead and turn my relay on to run the MSD but that back feeding, I turn the switch off and man, it would just keep running and running and running. So that's not too cool. So I just hooked it up on a switch for now until I can get to it and fix it. I got, you know, as you know, I have a lot of projects in this shop, but that was pretty cool. I love hearing this thing run. It's such a great motor. Uh, I don't have really any, any miles on it. I think it's got maybe a all together, maybe 80 miles. I just, after I did the power steering work, I went ahead and dropped the oil, changed the filter uh, for the first time since the break-in oil. And the oil that came out looked great. Honestly, it looked great. You see, you, you always see a little bit because you know, you've got your, your cam break-in material, you got your assembly lube and you got all this stuff going in there. But as long as you're not seeing chunks come out, as long as you're not seeing metal flake coming out, as long as you're not seeing any kind of that stuff, you're good. And this thing was nice and clean, nothing came out of it. I did save on the oil filter because I want to cut it open and I'm going to pull the pleats out and I'm going to take a look and I'm going to do that on camera so you guys can see with me. And hopefully, crossing fingers, because I'm going to do it live on camera, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, but I don't think there is. Th this thing that was pretty cool. I love uh, hearing this engine run. I, I love this car. Uh, in the beginning, I wasn't sure if I was going to keep it. And then the more and more I worked on it, the more and more it just kind of grew on me and, you know as you peel back the layers and you see the the really nice car underneath um you know this is definitely a clean one um when you compare this to the convertible you can kind of really see you know how nice of a car this actually is um yeah it's going to be a lot of work to get it up to you know looking like the seven liter but um you know, it, this car is worth it. There's, it's so clean. Um, yeah, it's got some damage to it, but nothing that can't be repaired. The, the main structure is in good shape. So, but um, now that we've heard the engine run, um, I want to go ahead and take you guys over and 
do the oil filter cut open. Um, I haven't done it yet, obviously, because I'm, you know, um, I'm going to do it right there on camera so that uh, you guys can see what I see. And hopefully um, the oil filter looks good, which, uh, you know, I'm totally expecting it to. Um, there might be a couple little bits in there from when the timing chain uh, smacked the uh, timing cover in the beginning. But um, hopefully there's not much in there. Um, but let's go find out together. So give me a second. Let me get that set up and then uh, let's cut that oil filter open. All right, as promised, um, we're going to cut this oil filter open, the one off of uh, my 65 hardtop. It's the car has that motor has a total of maybe, I don't know, 80 miles on it or something. Um, basically, it's all break in. So after I built the motor, it's all the break in miles, um, if it has 80 on it at all. But uh, I drained the oil and changed the filter back when I did the power steering gear. And so I wanted to cut that open. This is something uh, good that you could do at home. Uh, and you, they do it on aircraft at every oil change to inspect the oil filter to make sure that there's no uh, problems going on in the motor. So this is, this is like the telltale if you have any problems, it's gonna be in the pleats of the oil filter. So those pleats are gonna catch all that debris if there's anything in there. Now I'm expecting to see, you know, some light uh, uh, bearing break in, um, you know, and then of course all of the assembly lube for the camshaft and the, and the motor and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you're gonna see a little bit of discoloration, but what you're looking for is uh you know metal metal parts shiny bits um and i'll explain that a little bit more as we get into this i got this off of amazon uh super cheap i haven't used this this one before in fact this is the first time i've used this thing um so super cheap you don't need to buy expensive tools to get the job done uh, unless you're you know a, a a garage or something that's that's doing this for a living even then I mean, you know, a lot of the Harbor Freight tools and that kind of stuff, they work just fine. So, um, so basically, so what I've done here in prep is I just got a nice clean drip pan. So I, I oiled it down with some WD-40, uh, which is a solvent, not a lubricant, by the way. Wiped it off nice and clean so that there's, the surface is all nice and clean because what I'm gonna do is open this up. I'm gonna dump all the oil that's in there out and then pull the pleats apart. And I wanna inspect the oil that's in there, I wanna inspect the pleats, and I don't want you know, any foreign contaminant to throw me off. So you know, simply just wipe it down with the WD-40. I wiped the oil filter off as well, um, just made sure it's nice and clean, that way any debris or anything from it just being on the car driving uh, is not gonna skew the, the results here. And then just did a quick wipe down on the tool as well. So put some gloves on for just to kind of keep everything nice and clean. Um, these tools are super easy. Just, you know, it's like you're cutting uh, copper pipe, you know, building something at the house. So you just spin it a little bit, give it a little tweak, spin it a little bit, keep doing that until the top pops off. Can opener, I guess. Reminds me of, uh, you know, doing plumbing, doing copper pipe, but so we'll get this thing open. Let's see if that got all of it. I think it's that got all of it. Yeah, yeah, I think that got all of it. So you want to be careful when you're doing this not to crush the oil filter. Like if you crush the the bottom edge of it. Oh no, it didn't. It didn't cut this backside. Okay. Yeah, if you crush the oil filter, um, it's going to make getting that the inside piece out really hard. So um, just try and go slow. Do it by hand. Don't put it in a vise or anything. Um, otherwise, you're just going to fight it. There we go. I think I got it. There we go. That's it. 
All right. So in case you don't know how a oil filter is assembled, you know, got your lid. This is the part you see all the time. Got your seal here. Um, got your tube down the center, and then the the holes coming out. So what happens is, is it uh, it fills the tube down the center, um, comes out the sides, and then into the motor. So this is a, a very important piece right here, uh, the flapper, the the uh, the back pressure valve, or uh, what do they call these? The um, I always just call them flapper valves, but you'll notice it's silicone. And so what this does is it prevents the oil from draining out of the oil filter when the oil filter is not under pressure. Um, that's extremely important because if the oil filter goes dry, next time you go to start the car, it needs to fill that oil filter first before it can actually lubricate the engine. Um, so a lot of cheaper oil filters won't use silicone like this, but of course, um, the brands that I use are Wix, uh, Mobile One, and K&N. Um, all three of those use silicone um, drain back valve. There you go, that's what it's called. So pay attention to the, the type of oil filter you buy. Um, now, if you wanna just put the manufacturer, the AC Delco or the, you know, the Fomoco or whatever you wanna put on there, um, that's fine. But uh, oil filters are important because of the job that it actually does. So I'm just looking at all of the parts. Um, let me, uh, I think you're looking at me more than, than the filter here. So let me, uh, let me get you down here. I'll wipe my hands off so I don't get the camera all oily. Let me uh, point you down here at the filter so you can see what's going on. I gotta make a mess of this camera. Oh yeah, you couldn't see anything. Why didn't you tell me? You guys gotta, you gotta keep me informed here. You're all looking at me, probably screaming into the, into the TV. Can't see what you're talking about. Okay, so that's that, uh, that's that drain back valve right there. You see, it's got, you know, oil on it and stuff, of course. But what you're looking for. Is you're looking for big chunky sandy shiny chunkies and this is nothing this is all break-in material um, nothing's gritty same with this piece here this this goes right over in there this goes there this goes here top goes on that's how that goes together all these pieces look pretty good. Not a lot of debris in here. Not seeing anything stuck on the inside. You know, again, that's breaking. That's all the break-in material. That silvery, um, gray kind of look is a camshaft. So here's the filter itself. And again, you're just gonna wanna spread the oil out a little bit. And you're just looking for anything shiny Anything that, that glitters, you know, if it looks like a, um, oh, everything looks fine. Not seeing any big chunkies. So we will pull this apart here in a minute. That's all fine. That's all camshaft. Cam lube. The cam lube will throw you off because it's like that gray paste like stuff. Um, and when bearings are basically being filed down by the rotating assembly, what you'll find is a big pile of gray. And that's the bearing material. But on a break-in it'll kind of throw you off because the cam break-in lube is gray but you'll notice that this is not shiny there's no shiny bits to it which is good so we'll pull that apart here in a second I'm just gonna dump the rest of this oil filter out here on the on the table and I'm looking for chunks shiny bits 
That all looks fantastic. It's got a spring here in the bottom. That's what holds pressure on everything. And then you can go here in the bottom and just kind of scrape with your hand. And again, again, I have more of that that gray kind of uh, material that I used on the on the camshaft, but it's not thick, it's not chunky, it's just oily. Um, it's, it just kind of flows. If you can see that. Now, if it's thick and chunky, you got a problem. Um, but on a break-in engine. It's, there's no thickness to it. It's that camshaft break-in loop from Inski. So all that looks really good. Not seeing anything in the oil. No chunkies. Nothing that feels gritty. I'm, I'm kind of just moving my head around using the light to see if I can see any chunks, any pieces. Um, I don't see anything. The break-in procedure and the break-in of the engine can really throw someone off because, you know, when you're looking and you see all that gray material, it really makes you think like, oh man, I, I gotta, it's chewing the bearings up. It's you know, it's doing this or it's doing that. And, uh, you know, that'll throw you off. So, I know different cam manufacturers will give you different break-in loop. Um, but basically, the, the, the cam break-in lube is kind of like a, uh, kind of like, like a cutting compound when you're working on the car, polishing the car. And basically, that's kind of what it is is it's seeding the, um, let me see, let me grab a couple tools here. It's seeding the, the, uh, uh, the lifters. It's bedding everything together. So it's make, making a nice clean mating surface um, for those two parts just to, to meet up and and once they have a nice clean surface for them to uh, ride on then you won't get any premature wear and so basically that's what it is it's kind of a, a real mild sand sandpaper if you will I'm sure there's an easier way to do this but <clears throat> Somebody's sitting there looking at the camera, screaming, saying, no, do this, do that. No. Let's see if I can pull this lid off. Yeah, these things are built, you know, mega tough. You don't want to use any saw, of course, or anything like that, because any material that you used from the saw would skew the results again. But you don't want to do that. I don't know if I can pull this apart right here. There we go. There we go. That's why I like using these Wix filters. Wix, k and Mobile One. Um, they're all built so well. And if you really, if you're really not sure, you're, oh, I love Fram. There's nothing wrong with Fram. Go out and take one apart. You'll see. Look at that. Oh, I, I think I was doing all that off camera. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I just pulled it apart with a pair of pliers. But look at this. You know, I was struggling to pull this cap off. Look how well this thing's built. Look at all the pleats. You know, pull a Fram apart. You don't even got to count the pleats to see the difference. You'll see, you know, when you got, look at all how tight those pleats are. Nice metal, 
everything's put together so well that I'm just literally like bending and destroying it to try and get it to open up and come apart. That's, that's well-built oil filter, I gotta say. So basically what I was doing, since you couldn't see me, you were just staring at a pile of oil, is I was just kind of doing this. Taking a plier, putting it in there, just kind of bending back. And basically all I'm, all I'm trying to do is just liberate those, those pleats. And by bending it like this, I'm not introducing any foreign material in like you would with a with a blade, hacksaw blade or you know anything else like that. Of course, you do want to be careful because when you start bending this metal around, it is sharp. So you could introduce some uh, some blood into the mix if you're not careful. And of course, you know destroying the pleats is, is fine. Um, Look at that. I mean, it's held together. There's debris and microns, that kind of stuff. They're not getting through that. You know, they're not going to bypass these pleats. That is well built. And that's why you spend the money on a good filter. And really, they're not that expensive either. Um, if you want to save a couple bucks, uh, buy the Napa filters, the Napa Gold. Those are. Uh, those are made by uh, Wix. So you can get a Wix filter a little bit cheaper. All right, so now what you're gonna do is just gonna open it up. Go through and look. Check out all the pleats. We're gonna look at both sides. But again, you're just looking for shiny bits. You're looking for anything unusual. chunks your kids toy that you didn't notice he threw in there when you were putting the motor together never know what you'll find but this is gonna definitely give you the best read on how your brand new built engine is doing you know, this is probably a little bit boring, but if you've never seen this, that's, you know, I don't know, maybe it's kind of cool, but you don't got to spend a lot of time. You'll notice if there's something wrong, you'll, you'll see it very fast. There'll be a bunch of stuff in there that you're not supposed to see. All right, let's go down this side. Not sure if it's a chunky or not. Just run your finger over it. You know? See if it's got any kind of heft to it. This is all looking really good. And if you do find something you know, a little chunk or something like that. Like I'm seeing a couple pieces of, uh, of um, silicone, you know, it happens. Building a motor, unless you're in a perfect clean environment, um, you know, you're never going to keep everything out of there. I mean, you do the best you can, but I mean, if you're a guy building a motor in your garage, it's gonna be dusty right there, see? Got a little bit of silicone. And so I had to change the front cover on this engine. Um, I had to pull the timing cover off because uh, the camshaft manufacturer didn't tell me not to put the camshaft spacer in when you put the timing gear on, um, which is kind of important. You know, if they already engineered it in, tell people not to put it in there. You know, that way they don't. So I built that motor completely all the way from beginning to end and um, 
put the camshaft spacer in there because you know that's what you do. You, when you take something apart, you put it back together and you shouldn't have any parts when you're done. Um, I did that. I put it all back together and then when we fired it up to do the break in, um, the timing chain was uh, hitting on the timing cover. Man, you want to see somebody mad. Um, have something like that happen. I all right, that was pretty cool. Um, seeing that the, the motor's running good, everything's doing good. There's no issues um, that I need to look into. So my plan is to go ahead and do this on the next oil change. I don't know when that'll be, you know, on a car like this. Odds are you're changing it at the one year mark, not at the three to 5,000 mile mark. But I don't know, maybe it'll get, you know, 3,000 miles on it, 5,000 miles, I don't know. On a car like this with the conventional oil pressure, should probably do it every three. So. If it gets 3,000, then we'll cut it open again. If not, next year, we'll cut it open again uh, and see how it looks. But hopefully it doesn't take that long. I would like to drive the car around, um, but I am very happy to see that nothing happened to it. It's, it's, it's wearing in nicely. Uh, everything looks good. So thanks for coming on this journey with me, and uh, I will see you next time. And like always, Please like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to see the next video when it comes out, you know, hit that notification bell. Um, that'll let you know when I release videos. Again, I'm trying to get them out as fast as I can. I know I have enough film to probably make three or four more of these just on the film I already have uh, recorded. But getting that time to actually do the editing is hard. So uh, I'm trying to work on the cars during the day, see my son at night when he goes to bed. I'm staying up late trying to do the editing. So. Uh, but until then, uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or you want me to slow down on anything, uh, uh, please let me know. You can go to bumwithwrench.com and send me an email from there. Or you can just send me an email from daniel at bumwithwrench.com. Uh, until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.